Prince Wales Island is in southeastern Alaska. It had about 2,000 miles of logging road, really good deer hunting, bear hunting, and it also had a lot of ocean opportunities. We had about eight villages, and Craig, Alaska is a small town on the island. Regardless of who you hung out with on the island, everybody knew everybody. There was virtually no random street crime. Craig was absolutely safe. It was just a good place to live. November of 2004, I went to work at the Craig Police Department on a Sunday morning and around noon received a call from my dispatcher that a hunter had found a, a burning van with potentially human remains in it. I was skeptical. On more than one occasion, I've had human remains calls and turned out to be a bear that had been skinned. I uh, assumed that there might be another explanation for what he said he saw. On the early morning hours of November 14th, there was human remains found in a fire in a minivan. When we first arrived on scene, we were more looking at it as investigating a vehicle accident, and uh, eventually that turned into a homicide investigation. We did the preliminary investigation of the scene, collecting some evidence, doing more detailed photos. The body was too badly damaged in the fire to determine what the cause of death was. So the next day, when we, the crime scene, investigators got there, the body was immediately flown to the medical examiner's office in Anchorage. We still had evidence I had to go through in the vehicle, but it started snowing, and it started snowing pretty good. And enough where we didn't want to be stuck up on the side of a mountain during a snowstorm. So we took the car on a flatbed tow truck and brought it down the road to a state of Alaska garage where we could investigate more clearly. Early on in the search of the house, I saw a letter from Lori Waterman to Rochelle, basically an apology and a desire to have a better relationship. At that point of the investigation, I didn't know enough to consider that an important piece of evidence. I thought it was more important for the family to have that as a remembrance of Lori. Lori and Rochelle were fighting over Rochelle's dating Jason. There was, it was causing a lot of tension in, in the family. Lori was just trying to, you know, rein in a rebellious teen, and she was just being a good mom is all she was doing. Rochelle obviously didn't like her mother disciplining her and telling her who she can date and what she can do. Uh, and, you know, this is all pretty normal stuff for teens, but this just went totally out of control and ended up where it did. The letter was very loving and caring, and it was obvious how much Lori loved Rochelle. Rochelle kept the letter. Obviously, the relationship was not so broken that it couldn't be mended. Blogs were just kind of at their beginning in 2004, and teenagers around the world were pouring out their feelings, their thoughts to anyone who would read their blog. And Rochelle had a blog called My Crappy Life, and she referred to Craig, Alaska as Hell, Alaska. Doc and Lori's house was a house straight out of a 1950s sitcom, and the nature of a teenager is to rebel against that. Rochelle accused her mother of all kinds of physical abuse and verbal abuse. She said her mother told her constantly she was too fat, and she refused to let her eat. She hid food from her. You get mad at your mom, and all of a sudden, she pushed me down the stairs. Well, really? Well, did you go to the hospital? No. She hit me with a baseball bat. Really? I mean, I, I, I've been hit with a baseball bat. It hurts. Did you did you go to the hospital? Did you, you have a big bruise? Well, no. And we investigated these things, and there was nothing there. But it was like fantasy stuff that had no basis in reality, according to anyone that knew her. Nobody believed them except for Jason Arant and Brian Riddell.
One of Rochelle's last posts on her blog started with, and I'm paraphrasing here, well, as most of you know, my mom was murdered, and I won't be able to post for a while because the police are taking my computer to, to look at the hard drive. I hope to be able to post again this weekend. And people thought, what? It sounded like the only inconvenience with her mother dying was she was not going to be able to post for a few days on her blogs. People at Craig began to think at that point, maybe Rochelle was involved in the murder of her mother. My daughters commented to me that they liked hanging around with Rochelle, but every time that she invited them to go do something, these two guys would be there. And uh, Rochelle had changed dramatically in her appearance and behavior over the last year, hanging out with Jason Arant and Brian Riddell. I told my daughters just on instinct, don't hang around with those guys. If they're there, you need to leave. Rochelle was kind of feeling her oats a bit. She started hanging out with those creepy men, and you could tell Laurie wasn't real happy. They made her mother mad when she hung out with them, and it's not unusual for teenagers to fight with their mothers. Even in the heat of the moment, it's not unusual for a teenager to say, I hate you, or I wish you were dead. As a parent, my reaction would be the same thing as Lori was. He's way too old for you. You're better than that. You know, you're moving on with your life. You're going bigger and bigger places. 